We here at Gaming appreciate a good old-fashioned and cross-platform situation, especially when you're off to destroy necrotic armies alongside hunting down Shattered Worldstones. But having played some time on both platforms, we've jotted down for you the pros and cons of playing the PC and mobile version of Diablo Immortal to assist you with your adventuring needs. To chip off the first thing on our list, the gameplay between mobile and PC do not share too many differences, sharing almost the same kind of UI and visual setups. While the PC also owns the same feature, the auto-navigation feature is more helpful on the mobile version, making it easy for players to move around without having to keep their finger on the screen for too long. This also allows the added benefit of being able to do other things like checking the quest log and gear inventory while the character moves towards a pinned location. But other than that, gameplay for each platform is inherently the same, so there's no stress in relearning and unlearning certain playstyles and mechanics. On mobile, Diablo Immortal looks and runs well enough. Character models and environments are detailed and vibrant with small flourishes like breakable tombstones and grass parting away for you giving the world more life. There are even multiple graphic settings and visual filters to suit your preferred mobile gaming experience, and the resolution stays intact and consistent all throughout. But despite this, one of the pitfalls on mobile is that even with multiple graphic settings set to low or off, it is still a graphically demanding game. It is recommended to play on a mid-range spec phone from 2019 or newer to confidently run the game without any performance issues. Despite what the developers have stated as the game's minimum specs requirement for mobile, the game will need a very good phone to run without much problem. Additionally, while the game does well enough to visually interpret the classic Diablo isometric design and perspective to mobile, it is rather difficult to appreciate the game's detailed character models and environments, all due to the screen's smaller scale. It's pretty disappointing when you spend 3 hours designing the character of your dreams to have them smushed into a small iPhone screen, unable to see your hard work. On PC, the game definitely flexes and shows its good sight on a bigger screen and more capable hardware. The graphics settings department also boasts slightly more options, like setting the frame rate to 120 or an uncapped frame rate and V-Sync. At its best, Diablo Immortal on PC can look just as good, if not better, than its older sibling Diablo 3. Unfortunately, while playing, however, the frame rate starts to lag, especially in crowded places with a lot more player traffic despite playing on more capable hardware like an up-to-date PC or laptop. In spite of the additional benefits it has on PC, we do emphasize that it still is a direct port of the mobile version, so if you're here to expect drastic variations, especially if you're accustomed to PC gaming and searching for a little more of that oomph, you might find yourself disappointed when the game only offers a slight nudge. The game doesn't allow for more characters to appear on screen or more assets to show up, or any additional graphic settings that can further enhance the graphics of the game. The best thing about Diablo Immortal releasing on both PC and mobile is having a cross-progression feature. All your progress can be accessed on both mobile and PC without any hiccups on continuity and consistency of playing. So if one decides to play a platform to a certain mood, there aren't a lot of consequences in deciding so. But of course there will be some differences at play here. It is clear that the game is designed to be mobile first. It's easy to jump in and out of the game on mobile without the need to start up a game launcher on PC. On mobile, it's a lot more efficient to open the app and play the game on the go. Aside from being able to remap controls to your needs, the game has native controller support, so if your hands get tired of holding the phone while playing, you are at least given an alternative. If you're the type of person who struggles with keeping up to date with video game updates on social media and otherwise, the mobile version's notification system helps you easily keep track of things like party invites, time events, quest deadlines, and more. The biggest letdowns on mobile, however, include that the game eats up a lot of storage, requiring 2.5 to 3.5 gigabytes of free storage. This issue is all the more aggravating as the game contains optional game resource downloads that balloon the game's required storage space to about a whopping 12 gigabytes. Some of these additional downloads, despite being labeled as optional, will be required sooner than you might think with areas like Westmarch and the Darkwood being regions that you explore fairly early in the game. Diablo Immortal is a battery hog too. Casually playing for a total of 4-5 to five hours is enough to eat up most of a day's worth of a phone's battery life. There's nothing more annoying than diving deep into a game, having out to reply to an important message, 
only for the game to lose connection and log you out. This is something you really must watch out for on mobile, especially if you're one who gets easily distracted or need to multitask. The mobile version sadly has limited adjustable UI settings for touch controls. Everything in the UI is cramped, the bane of anybody with stubby fingers. Some icons are too close to the other, so tapping on a different prompt is always a consistent annoyance. The game doesn't have UI customization options that are pretty standard now, like the option to move where the primary attack and skill buttons are placed, so that is also a problem if your hand dominance affects how you play certain mobile games. While controller support works fine, it's not perfect with bugs at the controller cursor icon freezing and will stay there until you finally reset the app. Looking on the other hand towards PC, the game will not just log out on you like on mobile. The connection does not disconnect when you tab out, so this is one of the bigger strengths between PC and mobile. The PC version also has native controller support and the UI quickly adapts when you plug in something like a PS4 controller. You can easily change your mode of playing even during mid-combat with no issue. Some of the cons are that some aspects of UI and UX are pretty clunky on keyboard and mouse. You can't select multiple pieces of gear, and the default controls of using your primary attack with mouse and keyboard is unintuitive especially for classes with range attacks. So multi-management of equipment and resources can be a bit of a complication. Updates, unlike on the mobile version, don't readily put their players in the know-how on the in-game events and developments the company will be placing into the game. This can be easily solved by following the game's social media accounts for those updates. But if you're still looking for an inbuilt system that can help you keep posted at close range, this is something definitely not up your alley. We hope you enjoyed and found our comparison guide video useful. For more information and walkthroughs, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and this is Game 8, signing off.